Oh, and you'll never guess who's back. Chris D'Elia. Chris D'Elia is finally back. Finally, finally, final? Finally made a reappearance on YouTube via his podcast and spoke directly to us, his fans, his loyal fan base, his babies, right? Now it's kind of leaves a little bit of a sour taste in the mouth when you get referred to as a baby, don't you? You don't want to be a baby, do you? You don't want to be a baby. Who wants to be a baby? Ugh, weird. I know. Very, very strange. But regardless, he made his triumphant return back to YouTube and judging by the likes and dislike ratio, people are very happy to see him, right? Not much, you know, um, kickback in that regard. Everyone was really positive in the comments, um, you know, congratulating him on his return, saying how much they missed him, blah de blah blah blah. But is that apology enough? And the ultimate question, why would he bother popping his head out from the parapet now when he knows more likely than not, boom, it's gonna get smashed back down to the ground? Why do you guys think? Why do you think he'll do that? Why? Why what? Why what? My words are getting mixed up. You know what the deal is. Let's continue on. <laughs> oh. But anyway, let's see what he actually had to say, right? What did he actually have to say as you come out of the parapet? What's the main concern? Something that really bugged him and grind his gears throughout this entire time that he's going through this ordeal. M nearly a year, right? Since he's kind of been accused of what he's been accused of and went into hiding. What really bothered Chris Talia the most, do you think? What really, really bothered him? Let's find out. This guy made this book, he sent it to me, which means a lot. By the way, you know, I know I've been out and I haven't been online really that, that much at all, but I have gotten some messages and a lot of you guys have been really sweet. And I really, uh, I really, uh, I really, you know, those messages make you feel really, because man, I got fucking fucked by my friends. My friends just <laughs> didn't give a fuck, a lot of them, you know, Hollywood's crazy. <laughs> yeah that was really hard to deal with and it is it hey is hey 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 i got a lot of sympathy for the guy right i've got a lot of sympathy i think i even mentioned it before in a couple of other clips i've spoken about with chris Alia. i have no you know i, I a lot of my esteem for some of these dudes in this comedy scene has really dropped when this whole scenario came about. No, don't, don't get me wrong. Most of these guys are adults. They have families. The last thing that they want to do is lay their body along the line on the floor for somebody that they have no idea if they did the thing they did or they didn't. I understand. A lot goes into it. But the way that they used to act on these podcasts, the way they used to act on these shows, you'd be... You'd be um you'd be remiss to think that they were the best of buds that they hanged around each other every single day with their families going on holiday going for dinners when obviously in fact um, according to Brian Callan they weren't the closest of friends they didn't really know each other too well and they'd never spent any prolonged time with each other right that was the quote unquote wink wink the truth or kind of not the truth. But still, you would have thought there'd be a little bit more of solidarity, a little bit more loyalty, a little bit more of a, you know, umweta, sort of like a, hey, this is my friend. I'm not going to speak ill of my friend. I don't care what they did. I'm going to protect him and I'm going to speak to him behind the scenes, but you're not going to get me to speak publicly bad about my friend. No. Instead, what you had was every single person coming out of the blue, deciding that this was their chance to get on their moral soapbox and say, no, what he did was wrong. And you know what? I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't blame them. Honestly. You can't go around being accused of touching up kids and expect all your friends to line up and defend your honor. It's pretty difficult to do. Now, I would say if I had a friend and they were accused of something like that, I would probably have just kept my mouth shut. I wouldn't have gone to public and gone and explained myself and explained my friendship and kind of, you know, try to give some sort of rational explanation as to why this occurred. Not my business. I'd be more worried about my friend than speaking directly to them, which is what lends me to the whole, you know, the whole T-Fat K, I can't talk, moving the, cam moving the microphone away, crying to the, into the camera before you've even spoken to your friend. That was obviously a bad move. You don't do that. You go and speak to your friend if they're actually your friend. But if you're going to use them as clickbait and to get a little bit more of likes and to gain some sympathy and to maybe distance yourself from this abhorrent behavior, then it's probably a good idea. But also, Crystalia, what did you expect, mate? What did you expect? What did he expect? Honestly, what did you expect? You expect these guys to really come out and put their you know their hallowed hollywood careers their connections with caa wme their comedy store spots and all this sort of malarkey did you really expect these guys to really sacrifice that for your friendship even though you've given them millions of views met massive amounts of exposure at billions of or whatever pounds in flipping adsense um sponsors coming out of your flipping ass in terms of meandies and all that sort of stuff did you really expect that they would pay you back like a normal friend would and sort of you know say hey there's some loyalty in our friendship there's some honor in what we do and i'm going to stand next to you even though i know you're a delinquent piece of shit because most likely i was aware of what you were doing behind the scenes but i was okay with it because it was benefiting me did you expect that 
Well, you're in for a big surprise. They didn't do that, did they? They didn't do that whatsoever. Instead, if if any if ever, right? If ever what they actually ended up doing, they end up doing the complete opposite. They end up distancing themselves even further from the guy. Even further. And now he's desolate here with no sponsors, no snazzy little um, sign on the back of his podcast anymore, talking about his kid for 30 minutes and his relationships. And <laughs> I don't know, man. You know what I mean? It's a rap. I love the guy, but it's a rap. It's a literally really a rap. Unless one of these girls comes out and says, hey, everything I said prior, I made it up. It's a rap. What else can he do? How can he turn this around? Because he quite clearly still likes the attention. That's the only reason why I'd think you're going to come back out again and pop your head out of the parapet. He quite clearly likes the attention, which makes sense if you're an entertainer and you get on stage. You obviously have something in you that needs to be scratched in terms of getting that sort of dopamine hit, right? You need it. Cool. Do your thing. And he also needs to earn money to put the roof over his head and to put his family. Cool. Do your thing. And I'm okay with it. I think it's perfectly fine. But I think the odd thing is some of these guys... They don't, they're not actually happy with just having the podcast and having their fans support them when they go on the road. They want more. Chris Alia went to be an action star. He went to be part of the Hollywood elites. Well, unfortunately, you've tarnished yourself and you've also brought some unto, untoward... Because you know what actually happens, I think? I think most of the time, they don't counsel you in Hollywood because they're morally superior or they're, you know, they're, they're, their ethics won't allow them to stand next to you. It's because you're going to bring untoward attention to their own indiscretions they don't want that they don't want anybody that's going to you know bring any shine any more light on anything else that they do behind the shadows so they'd much rather sacrifice you so they continue doing their debauchery behind the scenes because if you think that he's the first and the last of these sort of characters that had you know a basically a two-faced persona where in front of the camera he was a silly goose guy and behind it he was creeping allegedly on girls that might have been under 18 under 17 under 16 and the like then you have another thing coming there's plenty more i'm pretty sure plenty more especially if people work working in the entertainment industry especially people that work you know in in nightclubs predominantly at night with people that are liquored up and boozed up and drugged up whatever it may be of course it's going to be some debaucherous actions there but they don't want you to shine any more light on it so what they're going to do push you out that's the easy thing to do push you out the door so they continue doing exactly what they wanted to do so if he's happy with just having a podcast and going on the road and doing a couple of spots here and there, maybe doing a tour of his own back and living similar life to what Louis C.K. lives, then he'll be perfectly fine. He'll still be making money hand over fist. But if he's really thinking that he's going to be able to walk back into the establishments that he was in before, get a Netflix special, all this sort of stuff, nah, mate, that dream is gone. That dream is way, way gone. But I think a lot of these guys have secret desires to be part of the Hollywood elite because I guess once you do get into those rooms, it must be so intoxicating to be surrounded by people that you stared at on their IMDb's for years upon end. You watch them in movies, you've seen them on TV series, to be standing next to them and hearing them whispering to you and lying that they like the work that you do and they look up to your talent and they want to connect and build and all this sort of bullshit. It must do something to somebody. It must do something to these people. It must kind of uh, just really, you know, touch something deep within them. No pun intended, but whatever it is, that dream is now long gone. Long, long gone. And unfortunately, Crystalia had to pay the ultimate price, and it is what it is.